Hey everyone, Honey Bee Honey here today. I'm going to show you how uh, we rob, or you can term it harvesting your honey. You'll hear me refer to it as robbing though in the video. This is my bee yard before I started today. And you can see that the first hive there has four honey supers on there. And what happens is I just, as need be, I add supers. So if the bees fill up the super below, I give them another super and wait till they fill that. Then I give them another one. Then the third week of August every year, I go ahead and harvest the honey and extract it. So here's my method. I hope you enjoy it. Today we are robin. So I'm going to do a fume board method. And I'll just kind of go through it real quick, uh, kind of speed up most of it for you. Won't take that long. But basically, on my hives, I have two high bodies, a queen excluder, and then honey super. So we're going to take all the honey supers off. We're going to leave the queen excluder till next week. Uh, then I'll flip it over, and then I'll take the queen excluders off too. But uh, we're going to rob all these hives, and then I got a few more out in the yard. But uh, I'll just show you real quick with one or two hives so you know what my method is. Hey everyone. For this method, you're going to need your hive tool as always. You're going to need some type of, uh, uh, you know, super harvest uh, chemical. So this is a uh, Fisher's Bee Quick, supposed to be all natural. It smells kind of like almonds. You'll need a fume board, which is just a uh, the same dimensions as a high bo or a, you know high body honey super, with with some padding on the back, and some tin on that side so that it warms up. So you basically just take the lid off as you would normally. down to the super. This one looks fairly cool. You just spray on your your uh, fuming stuff. I've got a couple different kinds of this today. This was from last year, this Be Quick, and it worked pretty good. Uh, had just a little tiny bit left. And then what I do is I typically Put it on at an angle so that there's just enough gap so the bees can crawl out of the end there. That way it doesn't, doesn't force them down too quick. So this hive is four supers high. Usually it takes a little while for this to heat up and start, especially it's early in the morning. And then once that starts to go down and the, the bees start to go down, they'll clear the first three supers pretty well. You're going to have a little bit of trouble here with the fourth one. And I can, I could just hear them. They just got a whiff of that, those fumes, so uh, they're getting a little noisy. But usually it's going to take 5 to 10, sometimes 15 minutes before this heats up enough to drive them, start driving them out. And then remember that fourth one's going to be a little tricky. Another trick I want to show you is when you, when you do pull these supers off, uh, I use California lids as pallets. So get yourself some California lids. Both for top, this is an eight frame, and I don't have any extra eight frame inner covers, so I'm just using a, one of these uh, California lids. I put some some tin foil or some uh, aluminum foil down at the bottom, and then I put the super down and let. There's like three bees in here, but if you if you raise that lid a little bit, they'll they'll come out. But uh, keep that covered while you finish robbing. I go about four high, just because. I don't want them sliding off the truck, but um, go about four high and then use your dolly and roll them onto your trailer and then into your uh, your honey room, so your honey house. 
So that's a neat little trick anyway. Use these California lids as pallets. You can dolly them in, but whatever you do, whenever you pull those supers off, just make sure you keep them covered. And like I said, if it's something here like, like this, where there's no honey in there, just a few bees. I didn't even put the uh, honey rubber on there. You can ba basically just shake them out. So that's a neat little trick. It's been just a few minutes. And you can just peek in there. It looks like most of the bees are out of the first super. So it looks like it's ready to come off. While I grab my hive tool, I just keep that on there. I don't want them to start coming back up. see sometimes in there but if you pick it up and there's still quite a few bees you know you can always just put it back down but that one's almost empty getting a hundred percent of the bees out of here is pretty tough so with each one you may bring a, a, a bee or two home and I usually blow on them a little bit put them on my stack a lot of times what will happen there's a little tiny cluster in there so I usually try to give them a little bit of smoke you'll find that when you have hives that made a lot of honey it's really hard to get them out of that bottom of super you don't want to put too much smoke in here because It'll linger. What I will do in that case is take a 10 frame hive body, put it out in front of the hive. Jar them out of there. Two big jolts. And take her in. Just as a side note, if you have an extremely heavy uh, super, you don't really want to jolt that like that because you could break frames. But it's okay if they're, say, less than 45 pounds or so. Okay, you can see I pulled all the honey off. I had a few more hives back in there. I'm pulling honey off too, but just a couple pointers when you're using this method and really any method. Uh, when you have your pellets set out, set two or three of them out, and, and whenever you get a light one, start a new one because as you go down, you know, say this one's four high, as you get down to that fourth one, there's just almost no way you're not going to take 25 to 30 bees or, or more or a few less with that. But it's nice to put that on the top of a stack so that when you get it in your honey house and you take off the lid there, it, it's easy for them to get out. Also, uh, I've also used a couple other methods. Uh, one that seems real popular is using a bee escape on the inner cover. And just be warned that if you do that, one time what happened to me is that because you have to break every super apart to get down to the inner cover and then put the bee escape on there, You've also broken up a lot of honey, so honey will will pull on the inner cover and sometimes plug the bee escape so that they can't get out. The next day you come back and you're, you've got a whole bunch of dead bees in your supers. So uh, this is the method I've basically gone to, but uh, however you want to do it is fine. And you can see that it's done. Next thing I'll do is I'll show you how the honey house is set up. Okay, and here's the super stacked in the honey house. I I've only robbed two of my yards so far, but there they are stacked, ready to go in the extractor. There's the uncapper, uncapping tray, there's the extractor, 
clarifier and the final is a storage tank. So after you pull the honey off the bees, uh, usually let them sit at least for a day or two and I restacked them and weighed them and everything and uh, they are now ready to be extracted.